Hello everyone, it is the Witch Doctor, and today is a Halloween special on my channel and of course on the Silver League. Today will be a story that I created all by myself. So guys, here is the story called Together Forever. Our story begins with a young girl named Phoebe. Phoebe loved dolls and always wanted one of her own. But Phoebe was very picky and couldn't just have any doll. She had hundreds of dolls, but was never happy with any of them. One Saturday morning, Phoebe asked her parents to take her shopping for a doll for her 12th birthday. Mom, Dad, can we go out and buy me a doll, please? But you have a lot of dolls already. Please? I saw one at the store. I really want it. I think it's perfect. Oh, it's okay, dear. It's only a doll, after all. And it is her birthday soon. We'll go right after breakfast, sweetie. Her eyes lit up with joy as she tried eating as fast as she could to get ready. As the mother and father get ready, Phoebe is upstairs making room on her bed for her new doll. Perfect. Right at arm's reach. Come on down, sweetie. It's time to go. Coming, Dad! In a flash, she was out of the door and putting her seatbelt on in the car. As they started driving, she told them where the store was. Strangely, both parents didn't remember a store on the corner of the school. Surely, there it was. An old rundown store with weird wooden toys and some dolls in the window. And right there in front of the, in front of the glass was the doll she wanted. Kinda creepy looking, don't you think, dear? Can't be that bad inside now, my love. Come on, let's go already! Finally, they all walked into the store and went to the front desk. There, at the desk, was a creepy looking old man with a very weird smile. How may I help you? I want that doll in the window. It's the only thing I want for my birthday. Yeah. How much is it? That doll in the window is no ordinary doll. It is a doll that has feelings just like us. If you are happy, then it is happy. If you are sad, it is sad. And so on. But, there is something you need to know. You must love this doll no matter what. Will you love that doll, little girl? Yes I will, yes I will! Alright, because it is your birthday, little girl, you can have the doll for free. No charge. Wow, thank you, sir. Something's not right, dear. As they started to walk out of the store, the old man stopped them. Wait, before you all go, whatever you do, do not throw the doll away, ever. It's been a week now that Phoebe had the doll, and no matter where she went, she took it everywhere with her. She even named the doll Bebe, and once it had a name, Bebe started to grow a bond with her. The two just seemed to never be apart. Even in school, Bebe went, but she hid it in her bag. One day during lunch while she was sitting alone, she pulled out Bebe and sat it next to her. Once she did that, it all went downhill from there. Two boys in the same grade as her saw Phoebe with the doll, and let's just say, these aren't the nicest of kids in that grade. Well, 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 look what we got here. A baby and her doll. Seventh graders still play with dolls? <laughs> what a lame-o. Hey, leave me alone. Oh yeah? Who's gonna stop us? Stop! You're going to rip her! But it was too late. The boys had already ripped off one of Baby's arms and legs. They walked away laughing. For three days, the boys kept making fun of Phoebe, and that's when Phoebe stopped going to school altogether. Her parents started to notice that she is skipping school and would hardly come out of her room. Later that day, her mother called the school to see if anything happened there, and surely enough, she found out Phoebe was being bullied at school because of the doll. 
Dear, I just called the school and they told me Phoebe's getting bullied by kids because of the doll. Ah, <sighs> well, I guess we have no choice, but we have to throw it away, I guess. I mean, it is broken after all. So that night, the parents went to her room and took baby while she was asleep. Arms and all. They both knew this would upset Phoebe, so the next morning, they sent her to stay with her grandparents. Phoebe loved her grandparents very much, so she got her things and left that afternoon. Not until Phoebe got to her grandparents did she notice that she had forgotten Baby at home. Little did she know, Baby was already gone and tossed in the dumpster outside. Once nightfall came, that is when the nightmare started to begin. What the parents had forgotten will surely lead to their demise. Do not throw the doll away no matter what. It was too late though. Inside the trash can was pure evil itself growing. Baby started to grow hatred for the kids and the parents because they are the reason it and Phoebe are apart. The doll began to move on its own. There in the trash can was a needle and a t-shirt. Baby started to repair itself with the needle and the shirt and climbed out of the trash can. No longer was its eyes black and white, but it glowed a dark red. Baby turned around and saw the house and knew what it had to do to see Phoebe again. The dad had fallen asleep upstairs and the mother was watching TV and was slowly nodding off downstairs. Just before Baby could even take a step, it heard two kids laughing in an alley. What bad timing, for the two kids turned out to be the bullies from school. These kids were up to no good, messing with an alley cat by throwing rocks at it. With the needle still in hand, the doll slowly walked up to one of the boys from behind and started stabbing him in the back and in the neck. The other boy runs away yelling and screaming. As the boy was dying on the ground, Bebe turned around to the house once again. Bebe started up the back of the house. And lucky for it, the back door was unlocked. It made its way into the kitchen and found a knife next to the bread on the table. Bebe climbed up onto the chair and onto the table, grabbed the knife, and it was on its way to the living room. There, it saw the mother fast asleep by the TV. Slowly it hopped up onto the couch, very sneaky, like a shadow. The mother felt something on her chest. As soon as she opened her eyes, it was too late. Baby had stabbed three holes in her chest and moved on. It was about to leave the house to look for Phoebe, but before it could open the door, it heard snoring coming from upstairs. Bebe hopped onto each step. Finally, it made it upstairs and into the doorway of Phoebe's father's bedroom. Bebe slammed the door and the father wakes up and looks around the room. No one was there. So he turned on the TV and there, at the foot of his bed, was Bebe covered in blood and this time it had a meat cleaver. <sighs> Oh my god, what the hell is this? Why are you here? The dad is so scared that he is paralyzed with fear. Baby starts smashing his fingers and beats him with the meat cleaver. With the dad's last breath, he asks, <laughs> Why? Why are you doing this? Baby has done what it had to do. The only thing left for it to do now was to go find Phoebe. The grandparents only lived a few blocks away, but Bebe didn't know that. So every house it passed, Bebe looked in all of its windows until it found Phoebe sleeping in a bed. It opened the window and sat in the bed. That morning Phoebe woke up with such a happy face. Her and Baby were together once again. Though she was shocked to see that Bebe was fixed. Bebe, oh my god, I'll never leave you again. I'll be with you forever.
baby had finally found Phoebe. They were together once again, happy and all. But what Phoebe didn't notice was something that didn't change on Bebe when it came to life. Its eyes were still red.